And now we're going to talk about clavicle fractures. But in order to talk about the clavicle fractures, we must talk about the clavicle. The clavicle, or the collarbone, is the only connection to the axial skeleton. Well, what's an axial skeleton? Well, if you put your hand on your chest and feel the joint next to the sternum, this is the connection we're talking about. This is something called the SC joint. And you see it here on this diagram. The clavicle then is a tubular bone that stretches from the SC joint out to the shoulder blade, which is also called the scapula. At the point that the clavicle attaches to the scapula, it meets part of the scapula called the acromion. And that joint is called the acromioclavicular joint, or AC joint. Now, all joints are held in position with ligaments. So when a bone meets a bone, we call this a joint. And what holds the joint in position are key ligaments. So at the SC joint, there's a set of very strong ligaments. And at the AC joint, there's two sets of very strong ligaments. This is important for understanding why a fracture happens in a clavicle, exactly where it happens, and what happens later on if the ligaments that hold the clavicle are injured. The fracture in the clavicle usually happens right in the middle of the bone. That's because the ligaments holding the SC joint and the ligaments holding the AC joint reinforce the bone at those ends. And so when you have a fall that's hard enough to fracture the bone, it usually fractures in the middle because that is potentially the weakest point. Now those type of fractures are usually very easy to treat. You can be in a sling for four to six weeks. If the pieces are not too far apart, then it'll heal on its own and it usually is healed within three to four months. But there are a couple varieties of fractures that do not heal well on their own. So there's a couple cases that you need to understand that indicate surgery is required. One is if part of the bone actually pushes through the skin. Because of the risk of infection, this is something that will require surgery. The second reason that surgery can be indicated is if the bone didn't push all the way through the skin, but you can see it tenting the skin. Because this poses a risk for injuring the skin and increasing your risk of infection, very often this is a good reason to have surgery. The third reason to have surgery is if a piece of the fracture is resting on the nerves and causing a problem with how the nerves are functioning. In this case, the pieces must be realigned, which would require surgery. And the fourth reason to have surgery to fix a clavicle is because sometimes the pieces are actually too far apart. And this is too big a gap for the bone to heal across. And sometimes the pieces are overlapped, which will shorten the clavicle, which could compromise the function of the shoulder. If you have either of those situations and they are noted on x-ray to stay that way for more than three to four weeks, I usually recommend surgery. Surgery these days has become quite good. There are plates that have been designed by computer programs that match the curve of the clavicle. And this has aided us in getting anatomic reductions at the time of surgery. And most of these plates, after the bone has healed, will not need to be removed. But the good news is that 90% of clavicle fractures will heal on their own.